reminder, next Tuesday will be a new life. Monday night Bible study will be canceled. But this, work, this weekend service will go on as normal. So um, Saturday morning prayer, Friday night men's prayer. We'll still come here and pray. I'm not going to stop praying because we got to work. Praise God. Yeah. You got to have the sword and the, and the shovel. Praise God. All right. You can't neglect one for the other. Thank you, Jesus. So we'll still be here this Friday night to pray. Then after that, I'm going back to work. Praise God. Uh, and so, um, we, amen. And so uh, I encourage you to, you know, uh, attend those things and invite somebody to the house of God. Amen. Invite somebody out to the house of God. You know, people are on vacationing and doing their thing, but invite them out to the house of God that his house may be filled. Amen. amen. All right, let's stand and go to the word of the Lord. I'm going to teach here tonight. I feel the Lord leading me in this direction. So um, we're going to go. I'm not going to be yelling at you. Maybe not. We'll see. <clears throat> we'll see. Um, turn your Bible to Romans chapter 8. I'm going to read from verses 15, excuse me, 14 to 15. Romans 8, 14 to 15. We'll say amen when you got it. Amen. Yes. All right. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. I want to talk to us tonight about being led by the Spirit of God. Being led by the Spirit of God. Come on, let's put your Bible down. Let's pray that the Holy Ghost would have his way in this place. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now, God. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and kindness toward us, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that you have your way in this service. I pray that you help me to deliver your word here tonight, Lord God. That your people be edified, Lord God. That you would have your way in our lives, Lord. Take complete control over this service, oh God. Open up our minds, open up our hearts to understanding, Lord, that your will could be done in and through our lives. Lord, we take control over this atmosphere right now, God. We bind up every spirit of distraction, Lord God. Anything that would oppose your word going forth, Lord God, we bind it right now, Lord, and forbid it to operate, oh God. But I pray right now, Lord God, a spirit of victory, Lord, and freedom, oh God, be in this atmosphere, Lord. That you, oh God, may have your way, oh God, that your glory might manifest in our presence, Lord. I pray that your will be done, Lord, and pray that you have your way, giving you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Somebody said, in Jesus' name. Now come on, somebody shout hallelujah to God. Hey, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory God, glory God. You may be seated. I know time has gone far from us, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to be quick. Being led by the Spirit of God. In the, in the scripture that we read, this is um, in the book of Romans, chapter 8. It's one of my more favorite chapters in the book of Romans because it's about, it's the contrast it's the other side of the contrast. Paul is no longer talking about his flesh or the sin that dwells in his flesh, but rather he is talking about being led by the Spirit. I've heard some people bring up Romans chapter 7 and, and use it as a license to commit sin because Paul says in that chapter, when I want to do right, I don't do what is right, and I know what is right. But um, that whole chapter was him dealing with him in his flesh when he was being led by his flesh. But in Romans chapter 8, he presents a new reality. Praise God. And it is all about being led by the Spirit. He said there's no condemnation in them that are in Christ Jesus. We walk not according to the lust of the flesh, but by the Spirit of God. And so this Spirit that we're talking about, it is the Holy Ghost. We call it lots of things. Move by the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, it's the same thing. And they're all God. I'm glad that we have the revelation and know who God is. And we don't think that the Spirit is a third person of some trinity. No, God is a Spirit. <clears throat> and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Jesus said He would come in the form of of the spirit he said behold i will come unto you and so know today that we don't worship when i talk about the holy ghost i'm not talking about a separate entity i'm not talking about anything that is different from god it's just a different manifestation jesus is no longer here in the flesh he's with us in spirit form this is why paul said very plainly for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god in this same chapter, he said, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 
okay? So we're not talking about two, three, four, five spirits. There's only one spirit, one God, one Father who is above all, through all, and in. Somebody say, it's in me. It's in me. Praise God. So when you pray, I mean, I guess out of protocol, sometimes we lift up our heads looking to something, but you're really praying to God that's already in you. Hallelujah, Jesus. And you've got to know that God is in you when you pray. I don't care how far you feel from him, he's still in you. Let me say that again, I'm going to help somebody. I don't care how far you feel from him, he's still in you. And the Bible says if we draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to us. Praise God. So when you have a mind to pray and to worship, doesn't matter how much sin you're in, you can repent. Come back to God and draw close to him and he'll draw close to you. Because the reality is he never went nowhere. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're the one that left out of place. Come on, somebody. Adam, where are you? Praise God. God never got anywhere. It was Adam, the one that decided to hide himself. When this being led by the Spirit, we're talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We preach it pretty much every Sunday that you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's when you first spoke with tongues. The Spirit of God came over you. You are now filled with the Holy Ghost. And you speak with tongues. Now when a person is filled with the Spirit of God, you're filled with all the nature and attributes of God. You get access to power. Everybody say power. Jesus said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You get access to wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Isaiah 11, 2, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So you get access to that when you receive the Holy Ghost. This is why I don't listen to nobody interpret the Bible that don't have the Holy Ghost. How are you going to interpret those word that was inspired by the Spirit of God without the Spirit that inspired the word? You can't. That's how you come up with foolish doctrines. Praise God. All right. And you can potentially get the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 and 22. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithness, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. These are the things that we get in the spirit of God, but they don't manifest by default. These things must be activated. Praise God. The spirit of God is, is represented in the Old Testament by the law. God gave them to them. The commandments, Mount Sinai was the first Pentecost that was to ever happen. It was the same day and God said, celebrate this. It was instructions that was given to them. But it was their responsibility to follow and adhere to the instructions that was given to them. The Holy Ghost is the same way. Jeremiah said, it's the law written in our hearts. He said, I'll write my law in your heart and in your inward parts. So no longer is God dealing with hard stones, though some of our hearts are hardened like stones. God is dealing with our heart and he put the Holy Ghost, his spirit in us. And it has the same capacity to lead us and guide us if we allow it. This is why people can be full of the Holy Ghost or have been received the Holy Ghost and be living like devils. You ever seen that before? I've heard people talk, talk bad about speaking in tongues because they said, we used to hear this. We were preaching at the Salvation Army. People would be like, ah, I don't believe in that whole tongue stuff. Well, why not? Because I know people that speak like tongues and they live like devils. Well, what's going on there? They have it, but they're not following it. See, the Holy Ghost can be a fix-all if you allow it. I, it's the same way I can give you this book. It's got all the instructions that you need, but it's not going to do nothing if you don't let it lead you and follow it. The Holy Ghost is the same way. It will lead you and guide you. The Bible says lead you into all truth. Will make it intercession for you with groanings that cannot be uttered. Praise God. You get power by the Spirit, wisdom and understanding by the Spirit, if you allow it to lead you. This is why Paul picks up in Romans 8 and says, them that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. That's a tougher requirement than just speaking in tongues one day and thinking you're good. 
Hello, and lots of us can testify that we spoke in tongues and made some stupid decisions afterwards, huh? I, okay, I'll, I'll put my hand up. Okay, what was happening? Not being led. The wrong thing was leading me. So I want to talk to us tonight. Um, and we're gonna, we're, I believe the Lord's going to do something in our hearts and help us here. First of all, we've already talked about the reason for the Spirit of God. Is, first of all, it's, it's, it's for salvation. Um, I'm not going to spend much of time here because we pretty much go over this every Sunday. Jesus said you must be born of the water and of the, of the Spirit. That Spirit is the Holy Ghost. And you, when you receive the Spirit, you'll make a sound. And that sound is you will speak with tongues. Okay? All right. So it's, it's a matter of salvation. Consequently, it's what makes you rapture ready. Because how in the world are you going to meet the Lord in the air by yourself? You ever thought about that? Like, how are we going to meet him in the air? What's going to lift me up off this earth? Well, his spirit is going to be one that's lifting me off this earth. And if I don't have that, you know, I'll be seeing everybody else go up like, huh, that's strange. <laughs> nope, y'all got something? <laughs> Maybe I need to activate it. Jump. No, if you don't got the Holy Ghost, what, what, what's going to call you back to God? When he blows that horn and calls everybody home that is his, guess what? It's going to be the spirit of God that comes and returns home. Praise God. So it makes you rapture ready. We talked about this. You receive power after you receive the Holy Ghost. More miracle power, wonder working power, 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 power. All kinds of songs we sing power. Here's the song we don't sing, the power to change. The power to say no. There ain't no songs, God gave me power, power, power to say no. You don't hear that song. Lay hands on the sick, casting out devils. He, all we sing about that. The power to shut up and forgive somebody. We ain't singing that song. It's the same power. It's the same Holy Ghost that'll lead you to say, mm, I made a mistake. I need to go follow the word of God. Praise God. You get power. You get a helper, a comforter. This is what one thing I love about it. Jesus said, I'll send you a help. I'll send you a comforter. And then Paul gives us explanation to make intercession for you with groanings that cannot be uttered. Because sometimes you just don't know how or what to say in prayer. You can't express what you're feeling and the burdens that you're feeling in your heart. And you don't know what to pray for when you do. So the Holy Ghost comes in. We call it praying in the Spirit or, or praying in the Holy Ghost. It is a helper. Praise God. And it prays with perfect faith. Thank you, Jesus. John 16, 13 says, it will lead you and guide you into all truth. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. These are the reason for, some of the reasons for the spirit of God. Of course, we can't exhaust all of them, and I don't think God has told us all of them. We'll find out when we get to glory. Praise God. But as of now, we get the same ability to live for God that Jesus had. This is why we're being conformed to his image. Praise God. And so secondly, we need to learn to listen to the spirit. John 16 verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth. Jesus saying to them, I got stuff I want to say, but I don't have time. And you can't handle it right now anyway. But when you get the Holy Ghost, God wants to deal with you. He wants to speak. He wants to reveal. He wants to lead, to guide, and to direct. The issue is that a lot of the times we're simply not listening. The Spirit of God is given for more than just power in speaking with tongues. It's here to lead us and to guide us. It is our medium of communication with God. And the communication word is prayer. Everybody say prayer. Prayer. Prayer, prayer is our method of communication with God. It's not just a one-way street where we sit down and we talk to God. God, I need, God, I need, God, I need, God, I want. Even, even praising God, if you're doing all the talking all the time, that's, that's not very, that's not much communication. That's right. Praise God. 
So we need to mature. That's a great place to start. But we need to mature beyond that. In the same way that a child, when it is born, it does not know how to communicate effectively. Most of the stuff is just gibberish. And even when they can understand and start making sentences, they're not really, they don't really get the communicate and respond deal just yet. It kind of work them a little while. Because a child can be talking to you the whole time, and you don't even, they don't even know you're not listening. Anybody got children? You, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Praise God. It's what, being a child in the kingdom, sometimes we're not effective communicators. We're not effective communicators to God. It's not just a one-way street. God is speaking to his people, but his people aren't always listening. Therefore, we must pray. Without an active prayer life, we aren't getting things that are necessary for us to live a life with God. Say that again. Without an active prayer life, you're not going to make it very far. You won't do very well. You'll eventually backslide. And this will be frustrating to you. I know prayer is not exciting to talk about, but it is the foundation or part of the foundation of our salvation. It is a principle that Jesus expected us people to, to, to do. Therefore, we must pray. Not might, we must pray. Jesus even taught us how to pray. Matthew 6, 9 and 13, 9 through 13. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now, much of us, a lot of us, some of you may have this memorized, and that's great. You may repeat this, and that's a good start, but this is not a prayer to be repeated. It is a template that includes elements that God wants you to include in your prayer. This is Bishop spoke about this, I think it was last first Sunday. It, you, you begin with worship because the Lord said to begin with worship. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's an element of worship. It's an element of praise. It's an element of adoration. Praise God. You don't have to repeat what Jesus said, but you can praise and worship God in your own words. Talk about his great. You want to bring me to tears, just, I just start talking about the greatness of God. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Great and mighty, oh God. Great and mighty God. Just begin to praise God and just begin to worship. And this is, a, you can't just start off your prayer with requests That's right. or even repentance. That's right. You got to come before the king in the right manner. That's right. He's a king, That's right. the king of kings, Lord of lords. You don't just bust into a king's presence. You don't. You don't just go up in there however you feel. There's a process, and that's what Jesus is telling us here. So your praise, your prayers should start with praise. And not the lack of daisical praise. I'm doing this out of routine so I can really get to my requests, praise. Because sometimes we do that too. Hallelujah, Lord, thank you. Okay, now what I'm really going through. Let me get the pleasantries out the way so I can, you know. No. Because I'm going to tell you another effect that that praise has at the beginning of your prayer. It gets you in the spirit. Because all, a lot of the times your mind is overwhelmed and consumed with distractions of life. And if you're going to pray to God, you're going to come before the king, oh, Jesus, and, 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 and request his time. Think about a natural king. You're going to use my time. This valuable time you're spending. So I'm going to, I want to, I want to take my time with this. I don't want to just, you know, a couple of seconds and I'm moving on. No. So we treat God like, you know, God, I know you're busy, so let me just get this and I'll, I'll, I'll holler at you later. No. Because he's not just our king. He's also our husband. He's our bridegroom. Praise God. And so you want, you want to spend, spend some time on this. Spend five, ten, I don't know how long you, go to, you guys pray, but spend five, ten minutes just praising, worshiping God. 
until all distractions are gone, until your mind is cleared out about everything. You might find out if you just praise God, you forget what you came to pray for in the first place. Might not have been that big a deal. What happened? I just got to lifting up the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, I wasn't frustrated or mad no more. I was getting ready to pray about it, but the praise took care of that. Oh, help us, Lord. That's the truth. I'm telling you the truth. So you, you might just take you a praise break. Oh, well, how do I keep from cussing somebody out? Well, go praise God for about 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it works. So I need to put that, start selling that. It works. Amen. Amen. Hallowed be thy name. So the first one is, 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 is praise. It's praise. Praise and worship is the entrance. Okay. Then there's a declaration. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. This is, this is, this is acknowledging a death portion, if you will. You're saying, I want your kingdom to come. And I want your will to be done. You can bring a whole bunch of requests to God, but if it's not God's will, do you want it to be done? How many want to be rich? Raise your hand. How many want to be rich if God's will for us not you be rich? Some of the hands went down real slow. Can we work this out? Is there a middle ground to this will here? You know. Because you might be getting ready to bring some stuff to the Lord that ain't his will no way. And here's the problem. If your faith is attached to that outcome, you're going to be real frustrated after that prayer is done. Like Samuel, he's praying for Saul. God said, I'm done with Saul. Get up. Stop crying. I'm done with Saul. You can pray for him if you want to. It's not happening. I moved on. I'm looking at David way out there on the other side. And so Samuel had to learn that lesson. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I moved on. And so we need to acknowledge we're not here to accomplish our will. We're here to accomplish the will of God. We're here to bring his kingdom down. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Let me pause on that kingdom part. We want the glory and manifestation of the kingdom of God to manifest on earth. On earth. Not our kingdom. Not the American kingdom. Not anything here. Our mind and attitude and focus should be on his kingdom. Sometimes we're so caught up, we're not really worried about his kingdom. And if the Lord were to come today and establish his kingdom, there will be some of you that will be like Lot's wife. Wait a minute, there's some stuff I like back there. Jesus even said, remember Lot's wife. Okay. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. That's another part of your prayer. Praise God. Give us this day our daily bread. So this is the provision part. For today. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Jesus even said, I believe it was in the same chapter. He said, Look, sufficient is the evil today. You worried about tomorrow. Just, just, just get through the day. This is why I'm praying. You know what's the word? If you're trying to beat an addiction, or you're trying to get over strongholds, the worst place you can take yourself is tomorrow. I'm, I'm trying to help you from what I've been through. I know for myself. The worst place you can take your mind to is tomorrow. Because you can be thinking, my God, how can I do it tomorrow? And then I got I to gotta not do it tomorrow. I got to not do it the next day and the next day and the next day. Just today. Just today. Lead me not in temptation today. Deliver me from evil today. I'm going to stay holy and righteous today. Praise God. Because you got mercy today. You got grace today. But if you take yourself into tomorrow, you're going to make yourself anxious and worried to ultimately just give up. If you do it today and then come back tomorrow and then do it again. And then come back tomorrow and then do it again. And then come back tomorrow and then do it again. Lord, give me this day. Praise God. We take ourselves into tomorrow because, you know, we think we are the ultimate masters in control of our own domain. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't plan, but don't worry. You got to have a plan. You got to have some sort of strategy. But at the end of the day, my main focus is for give us this day, daily, daily bread. This is also, we know that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word. So you should be in your word. It is not 
It is you are still praying if you stop praying to read your Bible. Let me say that again. You are still praying if you stop praying to read your Bible. I would suggest that you go and start praying the word of God. Through Psalms. Start praying that. And eventually you'll memorize it. And eventually you'll just be able to call on it when you're in a stressful. Woo, praise God. It is still prayer because this is the bread. This is the word that we live off of. Am, am I making sense? Okay, praise God. Give us this day. Here it is. And forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. It must include repentance. You can't pray without repenting. I mean, you can try. You got to repent. Forgive me, oh God. But if you want that forgiveness, you got to forgive. So what Bishop said was true. If you're not going to forgive, don't even bother praying. I don't know where you're going. Ain't nothing going to happen. You just boop, 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 boop. You know, just bouncing around all over the place. And, 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 and you know, if you need help forgiving, ask the Lord for his help. Lord, I, I, don't, I can't be blocked from you, but my flesh is having a hard time getting over this offense. You were able to forgive from the cross, Lord, so I need that same power to forgive. Give me your heart. Give me your mind. Give me your whatever it needs because I can't miss heaven and go to hell for somebody else. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Amen. So your prayer must include repentance and it must include Forgiveness. Okay. Verse 13, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. This is a surrender to God. You're saying, you lead me, God. I'm not leading me. The whole thing is about being led. You lead me, God. I am not leading me. You take me where you want to go. You do with me what you want. Praise God. And then the last is like praise again, but acknowledging, for thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory forever. Amen. These are the elements that should be into your daily prayer. To your daily prayer. Now, of course, if you just include these elements alone without even listening, you've already got a half hour worth of prayer. By the time you praise for 10 or 15, 5, 10 minutes, we'll say 5, 10 minutes to be conservative. By the time you praise for 5, 10 minutes. And by the time you acknowledge the will of God and the kingdom to become, and by the time you pray for provision in your own words, you know, give us this day, give me my peace for the day, give me my mercy for the day, give me my protection for the day, protect my family for the day, keep them covered for the day, keep my kids in line for the day, praise God, send your angels of protection down, keep me healthy today. My God, I'm just, this is a minute and a half right there. Time you do that and then get to the repentance part and the forgiveness part. You already at 20, 30 minutes just in these, you know, and you'll be surprised how quick that time will fly. Praise God. But it is also you want to make time out to learn and get familiar with how God deals with you. Because as we have discussed, prayer is not a one-way street. It's not like this sermon where I'm doing all the preaching. And you guys have responded with amens and, you know, some old me's. <laughs> Help us, lords. That's not how prayer is. Prayer is that God wants to talk and to deal with you. The question is, are you patient enough to find out and consistent enough to understand how God is going to deal with you? Just like a child, that child must learn how their parent talks and deals with them. And learn the difference between their parent and somebody else's parent. You got to know the voice. Now, I've heard God say they deal with him a whole bunch of ways, audible, you know, whatever, whatever, however God deals with you specifically. You need to know that. And the only way that happens is by being consistent in your prayer. Let me help you. You're not going to pray once and figure it out. You're not going to pray twice and figure it out. You're not going to pray for a week straight and figure it out. Maybe. You do some fasting in there, maybe you'll get this flesh consecrated enough and smashed down enough that you can discern the voice of God. But it's going to take a prayer life. 
and consistency for you to understand when and how God is dealing with you. So, don't get frustrated if you feel like you're not hearing from God or you're not communicating or nothing's happening. Don't get frustrated. You're learning. You're growing. Abraham went 13 years without hearing a word from God. And then the next word God spoke was, walk before me and be thou perfect. Right, right. <laughs> How you like that for <laughs> niceties? <laughs> So this is what I really want to stick on right here is that we've got to begin to pray consistently so that we know the voice of God. Amen. Because I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, well, God said and God said this. I'm like, ooh, that don't even make sense with the word of God, let alone common sense. Oh, the spirit told me that. Well, that wasn't the spirit that told you that. And it, and it is no affront to your dignity or ego. It's really a good check and a caution for you. Because there have been times where I prayed and I went to Pastor Collins. Pastor Collins, I feel like the Lord did with me. He's like, mm, pray again. <laughs> Just like that. He was right. <laughs> Y'all got quiet on that one. Yeah, I got it wrong. You're going to get it wrong. Doesn't mean you're not spiritual. Doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Ghost. Doesn't mean you got a devil either. You just got this one wrong. You got to learn to hear and discern that voice of God. You got, you got to learn that. And so, but if you never do it, you'll never learn it. I could talk about prayer all day, but he really, you just got to start. You, you got to start doing it. Okay, take you to scripture because so, we got to back this up. First Kings 19, this is Elijah in the cave. First Kings 19, 11 and 13. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. Um, and behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earth. After an earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it. That he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and says, what doest thou here? Amen. Now, if I'm praying and the earthquake happens, I would probably think just out of my flesh, God has answered. Right. Depending on what I'm praying for. <laughs> if I'm praying and a wind comes, I'm like, okay, that's the Lord right there. Woo. That God, you hear God move? Question mighty wind. Boy, this service is on fire. And we do that. Beat, get the kicking, music, get the going, wind come in here. We, God is in this building. Woo! One statement to throw everybody off. Oh, yeah? What'd he say? What'd he say? If God showed up, you think he showed up just so we could jump and shout? What'd he say? Where's the word? Where's the revelation? Where's the glory? Where's the healing? Where's the Holy Ghost? Sometimes we settle for the earth, wind, and fire. Oh, we had good church if it's earth, wind, and fire, Brother Ray. Good old church. Fire from Pentecost. But even after Pentecost came, Peter said, I got a word. This is not that we're not drunk. This is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. You know the rest. He began to preach to them. So guess what? God was wanting to speak. But Elijah had to have enough discipline. Mm. Don't forget the fasting element, 40 days and 40 nights it took him to get to the mountain. He had to have enough discipline to know the earth, wind, and fire ain't it. It may appease my flesh, but that is not the voice of God. That voice of God was small, still, and quiet. And sometimes we, I need a word, I need a word, I need a word, I need a word. Well, then Listen. We're tossed to fro by every wind of doctrine because we're not listening. That's right. Praise God. Right. Praise God. Sometimes you don't need a word. You got all the word you need. You're just not following the word that you have. <laughs> Praise God. So this, this, this listening, God, that means, Elijah, can you imagine Elijah on a mountain? Woo, earthquake. And an earthquake going to shake a mountain. Fire, hot, heat. And he's like, ain't it. Then he hears, that's it. 
that's it. Ooh, praise God. And telling, having heard from God in that fashion before, that's exactly how it feels. For me, it's just a small unction. And if I'm not careful, I'll miss it. And if I'm too focused on the earth, wind, and fire, I'll miss it. Small little unction. Go do this. This is how I found this out. I was, we were at our old church, our old building. It was Bethesda, right down the street over here. And I, went, I listened to a Mark Morgan sermon. I mean, that, that man will get you on your knees. You know, praise God. At least he does it for me. So I asked my wife, I said, you know, just drop me off in the church. I got to go pray. So I went there, and I went, I went to go pray. And my whole prayer was like, God, I really don't know your voice. I'm supposed to be a preacher. I was a minister licensed at this time. I'm like, I really don't. You know, maybe I had like a lapse of judgment. I don't know what it was. But I felt like I wasn't close enough to God. He could speak to me the way. I, I want to know how you speak to me. I've told this story before to some people. So I'm sitting there praying. I just feel, and I, I we call it an unction. People get real, sp- I felt in my spirit. I'm not going to say all that. You, you, you know how you know something? Like, like if, if I go like this, all of y'all probably at the world, I would look that way. Right? I didn't say anything, but you understood my communication. Right? You know to look. It's, that's how it feels, but there's no audible, visible thing. I just felt get to get up and go check the front door. So I went up, and I checked the front door. Now, the way the sanctuary was, if you were sitting at the front door, you couldn't see in because there were double doors. And I was praying by myself. It was completely black dark, so nobody on the outside could see the inside, and I couldn't see from the inside. I couldn't see to the out. So I, I didn't know. I went, as soon as I got up and opened the door, there's a lady standing there with a big old plate of uh, a, a container of mac and cheese. And she's like, is Sister Hughes here? No, Sister Hughes not here. So, oh, thank God you answered the door because she was supposed to meet me here. I got all this food that I was going to donate, she was supposed to meet me. I said, I'll go ahead and take it. And I called her. And I went back to my prayers. The Lord said, that's how I'm going to deal with you. It was just a little tiny, go check the front door. Okay. okay. And boom. And that's it. So I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. I'm listening for that same feeling. And sometimes that feeling has said, there's sin. Sometimes that feeling I said, go pray for so-and-so. It didn't say it. I didn't hear, go pray for so-and-so. I'm just praying. I'm talking in tongues, and I get that same unction to go over here, and I come over here, pray, and God does whatever he's going to do. There have been times where I've been out and about, and God was like, "Mm, go deal with this person. That same unction. Now, whether he does with you, some people hear an audible voice. Some people, I've even heard of prophets and preachers testifying, they'll get like a little tingling in their arm or bumps or something will, will, will come on or they'll get pains or somewhere. The Lord did. I don't know. I'm just telling you how I found it for myself. But if you're not praying and you're not listening, you won't know that. Right. Right. My God, you won't know that. And that, that, that prayer, that wasn't no 15 minute prayer. I was there for hours. Praise God. God is talking, but his people are not listening. Maybe it's because you don't know you're supposed to be listening. But you are supposed to be listening. And not every time he'll deal with you with an earth, wind, and fire moment, it might be a small, something that you have to be spiritually intentional on discerning. Amen. Time is running out, so I'll, I'll, I'll move forward. We, we must be listening to the word of God, to the spirit of God. Now, not only does the Holy Ghost deal with you in prayer, but it will deal with you outside of prayer. That's right. Call it kind of convictions. Okay? Call it convictions. Okay. Now, there have been times where I've been watching something and the Holy Ghost, mm. Listening to something and, mm. And sometimes it's not even outwardly bad. But the conviction, I'm like, mm, I can't, we can't. And I find out later there was some stupid foolishness. And I was like, oh, that's why the Lord didn't want us, you know. There will be some conversation. The Lord like, shut up. Mm. I'm serious. But if you're not paying attention, you can turn that right off. The Baptist call, I'm going to hang up my Holy Ghost. <laughs> Put it right there. And turn that right off and do whatever you feel in your flesh. The Holy Ghost doesn't just work in prayer. Remember, lead me not into temptation. 
but deliver me from evil. So, so if there's some evil coming across your path, what do you think the vehicle that God is going to use to deliver you from that evil is? It's going to be the spirit of God. And you're going to feel a conviction. Now, you have the choice to turn that on or to turn that off. You can ignore it like an alarm on your phone. You can ignore it. Boop, boop, turn that off. Keep on doing what I'm doing. And then you can't blame God. I didn't know. I didn't have it out. No, the Lord's like, I dealt with you and you know it. But instead of obeying what you feel, and you're going to make some mistakes in this era before you realize, I need to obey that when I feel it. I need, because you can't always have the pastor around. You can't always have your Bible around. Matter of, that's why you, get, you got the more perfect law written on your hearts. So you don't need 613 thou shalt not to direct you on a daily basis. All you got to do is obey the Holy Ghost that's in you, and it will keep you holy. It will keep you righteous. It's not going to lead you into no evil. Praise God. So obey that conviction. Convictions, where you go, what you're listening to, what you wear, what you say, your conversation, social media activity, text, all. God will deal with your whole life if you allow him. Or you can ignore it. The choice is yours. That's why the opening was them that are led. And sometimes we're okay with the Lord leading us in certain parts of our lives. But certain stuff, Ryan, you, you can't touch this. I'll, this is my space. Except we call it Facebook. It's not my space no more. <laughs> You're joking. People are different people online. Amen. The Lord works there too. Amen. So some wisdom and discretion. Okay, to close with this. Has this been helpful so far? Praise God. To close with this, some guidelines. Because some the, the Pentecostal movement gets a lot of criticism because of the fanatic and crazies. Just because we're spirit-led doesn't mean there's no order or structure. Spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So, like I said, you have control. You can shut it down. Praise God. All right. So, first of all, the spirit and the word will never contradict one another. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So, if God is a spirit, and God is the word, and the word and the spirit will never contradict one another. So, the first check to think, if you get something in prayer... Check it off the word. So if you're praying, husband, and the Lord told you, divorce your wife. Guess what? Wasn't the Lord. He told you to call up this woman over here. That wasn't the Lord. We'll spiritualize it too. But I know she's not saved and, you know, she need a Bible study, so I was... the truth. We'll spiritualize our, 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 our will. I feel in the Holy Ghost. Well, okay. Let's, 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 you know, let God be true and every man, you know, rest. All right. <clears throat> Next, oftentimes, a saint, elder, a mentor, or another person, pastor, will confirm what you feel in the spirit. So it's good to have that balance. For mine, it's Bishop and Pastor Collins. If I feel like I got something in the Lord, I, I'm not, I'll check them. Pastor, I was one time, I was praying, we're having church, we're having revival. I'm like, Pastor, I feel like we should bring this evangelist. I feel like the Lord told me, nope. It wasn't it. And it wasn't it. We got somebody else and the Lord moved. I think we had 11 people baptized that day and five people received the Holy Ghost. I checked it off of my authority. And my authority said, that wasn't God. So I didn't get all in my feelings and say, ah, I'm leaving this church. I'm, you're hindering me from. <laughs> I'm serious. We get there. We go there sometimes. And it's, and it's completely unnecessary. Because in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. There is safety. Yes. Praise God. I want you to hear that. In everywhere in your life, the more, the more counsel you can get. Better. Come on, somebody. Yes. All right. 2 Corinthians 13, 1 and 1, this is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Proverbs eleven fourteen. where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Don't forget, Eve was tricked, Adam was not. We cannot dismiss our ability to be tricked. 
Eve was tricked. Eve represents the church. Adam was not. We cannot dismiss our ability to be spiritually deceived. And the way you keep yourself from spiritual deception is in counsel and authority. Because if God is speaking and doing something, he'll normally confirm it. He'll normally confirm it. Through a man of God. It only has to be a man of God. It could be one of your, one of your fellow saints. Many times I've had a dream and go told somebody a dream. And they're like, that's the Lord. But I didn't know. I just had a dream. I was just telling you what the dream was. Yeah, yeah, but I was praying about that very same thing. You know how many times a Friday night prayer call will confirm something that I was already praying about? And this person from another part of the country that has no idea who I am, doesn't even know I'm on the call, says the very same thing I'm praying about. And I'm the one, I'm, so, I'm the one texting Pastor Collins like, this is in the Holy Ghost. I was just praying about this. And so he'll say people are texting me all over. Well, because that's how God works. Okay, so there's, there's checks, okay, and there is balances. Because if not, all, the, all that devil has to do is present himself as an angel of light. And he'll have you out here believing all kind of, that's how people get into false doctrine, false teachings, all that, because of spirit. They did it a spirit. And I say, well, who are you to, uh, to, to tell me I can't when God told me? And they use the God told me as a license to do whatever. Like, nobody can check it as long as the Lord says, well, my, I beg to differ. You want to be apostolic. You can be whatever else and do whatever you want, but you want to be apostolic. There's checks and balances. Even Peter, after God told him to go preach to Cornelius, had to come right back to that council in Jerusalem. And they said, Peter, what'd you do? Why'd you, who told you to go up there? Am I, am I in the Bible? I mean, y'all don't know this. It, read it, Acts chapter number 11. Peter had just got through preaching to the first Gentile family receiving the Holy Ghost. God had done a miraculous work. And he went back to Jerusalem. And the council in Jerusalem asked Peter to give an account for what he had done, what he had felt in the spirit. And he obliged. He had witnesses. This is what happened. God dealt with me here. I went up here. I got witnesses. He received the Holy Ghost, and I baptized him. And they said, okay, it's of God. And he was the chief apostle. So even the chief apostle had accountability. Paul didn't just go evangelizing. You want to know how Paul was called? Go read it in the book of Acts. The elders of the church were praying, and God spoke to the elders and said, separate me, Paul, and Barnabas for the work that I have. That's right. That's right. God didn't speak to Paul directly for the work, for the initiation. Right. This is why Paul says, how can he preach except he be sent? And that word sent is apostolos in the Greek. So guess what? If you think you heard from God, great. God is talking all the time. But do yourself a favor and check it. Check it to keep yourself out of trouble. Because there's going to be times where you, did, you think you hear from God, but it wasn't God. Because God's not the only spiritual being talking. Amen. So these are some guidelines to be led by the Spirit. I know I went over time a little bit, and I apologize. But I really feel like in the Holy Ghost that this is going to help us here tonight. So as a, as a closing, closing scripture, I want to read this psalm and we can all stand and as we close out. This is probably the most familiar psalm in the Bible. If you had to guess what you think it is. 51. Man, he'd be repenting all day, huh? Praise God. He said Psalm 51, Psalm 23. The Lord is my, I shall not, he maketh me to lie down. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is our shepherd. He's leading you. He's the one that gave, walked you by the still water. He's the one that caused you to lay down. He's the one that takes you through the valley. He's the one that has your cup running over. The anointing comes from him. The goodness and the mercy. So let's stop leading ourselves. 
Let's be led by the Spirit of God. Come on, I'll open up these altars if anyone wants to pray, have anything to pray for tonight. Maybe you just need to reconnect to God for yourself. I invite you to come. Praise God. We're going to pray right now. Your hand lifted, your eye closed. Let's begin to pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your word here tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would begin to speak to your people, God. That you would begin to deal with us in the Holy Ghost, Lord God. That what was taught and said here today, Lord God, would be hidden in our hearts, Lord. Oh God, that we should be more attentive, oh God, to the Lord of our salvation, Lord. I pray, oh God, that as we draw close to you, God, that you would draw nigh unto us. And I pray here today, Lord God, that you would forgive us, Lord God, for not taking the time out to talk with you, oh God. To listen with you, Lord Jesus, to listen to you, oh God. I pray right now, God, that you give us a burden for prayer, oh God. God, that you call us back to the altar, Lord. back to the prayer, back on our knees, Lord God. Lord God, that we should have victory, oh God, and not turmoil, Lord Jesus. God, I pray a blessing over your people right now, oh God. I pray that you help us, Lord Jesus. Lord, for we're nothing without you, oh Jesus. We need you in every way, oh God. God, there are times when we neglect you, Lord, and we pray for forgiveness, oh God. But I pray here today, Lord God, hallelujah, Lord, that a means of communication would be established with every child of God. Everyone baptized in Jesus' name and full of the Holy Ghost, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you would begin to deal with them, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you would help us to mature, oh God. Help us to seek you, Lord Jesus, oh God. Oh God, we've got a mighty work to do in this last hour, oh God, but we cannot do it without you, Jesus. Well, you said in your word that it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, Lord. So, Lord, tonight lead us by your spirit, where there is no condemnation, oh God, where there is freedom, oh God, where there is peace, oh God, where there is love, Lord, where there is mercy. Lead us into that place, oh God, for you truly are our shepherd, Lord God. Lord, we have attempted to lead ourselves, Lord God, but have led ourselves into a wrong situation, Lord God, in the wrong paths, Lord God. But you, O oh God, will not lead us into temptation, Lord, but you deliver us from evil, O oh God. So, Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, that you would begin to show up in our prayer rooms, O oh God, in our bedrooms and bedsides, Lord God, and our employment, Lord God, and our schools, Lord. Show up, Lord God. And when we call on you, God, you hear and you listen, Lord God. That your ears attend to our prayers, Lord God. And we'll be careful, Lord God, to spend time with you, O oh God, learning your voice, learning your commands, Lord God, learning you, O oh God. For you said in your word, your sheep know your voice and another they won't follow, Lord God. Make yourself known to all those, Lord God, that will know you, Jesus, O oh God. Manifest your glory in our presence, O oh God.